Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to play Gone Home. Uh, this is available on Steam for about $15, so it's a little spendy. Um, I don't really know what it's about other than we are going home and we're investigating a house of some sort. Uh, one of the things that caught my eye is that it said that this is based in Washington. I don't know how that is, other than maybe that was just their intention, or maybe it shows Washington landmarks, which would be cool, because I am a Washingtonian, so that kind of got my attention. Um, I installed this previously, and for some weird reason, some of the fonts were missing. So I deleted it, and I re-downloaded it, and it looks like it's working now, so let's go. That's why it says resume. I really haven't played it at all. I just started it. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's working. Okay. Hi, Mom. Uh, so, so I got, I got my, my ticket, ticket home from Europe. Europe. I get, get back, back on June 6th, but it's a really late flight because that was the cheapest, cheapest so it gets in at midnight. midnight. But, but don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport, airport so you don't have to pick me up. up. Like, like, really seriously, you don't have to. Okay, okay so, so love, love you. you. See you soon. Bye. Okay. Good. June 7th, 1995, 1.15 a.m. <laughs> so when I first started this, it was like every other letter was missing. And at first I thought maybe there was some cryptic thing going on with the text. And I'm like, is this part of the game? But I soon found out it was not. So that was kind of funny. Okay, let's go. Caitlin Greenbrier, Portland. Okay. Uh, flight number 227, uh, 270, uh, date June 6th, 1995. Christmas duck. Uh, let's look at it. It is indeed a Christmas duck. Everyone needs a Christmas duck. We'll put it back, but we'll take the key. Mm. Press 1 or I to take the contents of your backpack. Okay, we got a passport, a boarding pass, and a key. And we have a, a map of the front porch. And a journal. Okay, let's go. Let's continue on. Oh. Okay, it doesn't look like there's really anything else to see. Ooh. Front hall. Wellspring Movers. Okay. So, oh, I see. It's like a moving company. Alrighty. Dear Katie, so much has changed. Even, Even just since you've been away. We moved into this house. I'm in a new school. And my big sister being gone for a year doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't feel real. But I'm not gonna let it face me. I used to tell you everything. And if I can't do it in person, because you're off gallivanting around who knows where, I'll tell it to this journal. Just like I was talking to you. Stephen King. Okay. Critiques, the art of feedback. Get published, the secret, the blank page. Alrighty. Ooh, toilet paper. A rarity of today's society. Very hard to find. Let's see, this is soft plus. At least it's not the creepy kind with the bears. I'm not saying that's bad toilet paper, I don't really know, but the bears creep me out. Seriously, they're just obsessed with pooping. It's disturbing. Just saying. Okay. Ah, lights could help. Ooh. What the 
hell was that? <laughs> we'll flush the toilet. Maybe that'll help. I'll turn on the thing. We'll turn it back off. Okay, that was a really loud noise, and it sounded like maybe it was coming from upstairs. But let's keep looking at the downstairs. Press 2. Okay. Yep. We are in the hallway. Welcome new student. We hope that you are excited about your first day at Goodfellow High School, as we are. Please be sure to bring the following with you on your first day of class, so you can get right into the swing of things. One sturdy folder with pockets in each of your six class periods. One line notebook per period, uh, or one notebook with six divided sections. At least six pens, blue or black ink, and six pencils. One box of colored pencils, a standard combination lock for your assignment locker, a nutritious lunch, or 250 for lunch provided by the school cafeteria. A positive attitude. I'm not going to get political, but I think school lunches should be free. Moving on. Uh, please remember to get plenty of sleep the night before and be ready for the first bell to ring at 8 a.m. See you soon. And again, welcome. Beth Valance, the principal. She seemed friendly. Oh my god. You are so lucky you finished high school before we moved into this house. So, it's the first day of school, and there I am, introducing myself to the class. And I say that I just moved into the house on Arbor Hill. All of a sudden, every kid in the room turns and just stares like I suddenly transformed into a mutant. I just stood there, pushing pretty hard for a rewind button. Because now maybe nobody knows my name, but they all know who I am. The Psycho House Girl. Right. <laughs> Psycho house girl. Did she move into a haunted house? Is that what this is? Haunted. Paris. Woo. 8294. Hi, Mom, Dad, and Sam. I'm in Paris. I've done many Parisian, is that how you say it? Things, including eating Le Petit de Vigneur and wearing a brette. I really hope I'm saying this right. Oh my god. Um, I'm going to have lots of film to develop when I get back. Sam, I'm bringing you back something from the Shakespeare Book Company. Since you are my favorite sister, love you all, Katie. Mom, Dad, and Sam, 1 Arbor Hill, Boone County, Oregon. Oh, so is this in Oregon? I thought I said Washington. 97141, USA. Mm, lots of stuff in here. Oops. Grab that pencil. We might need it. <laughs> we can stab someone with it. Oh, okay. Well, that did nothing. So can we take these, or do we just hold them? That's weird. Well, I guess we can look at them. Okay. Okay, an obituary. Oscar Doc Masson. Oscar Masson, 60, of Boone County, died peacefully last month in his home. Mr. Masson was born on September 8th, 1933, in the house that would be his home for the rest of his life. <laughs> he attained his degree in pharmacy at a young age and returned to Boone County in practice. He quickly became a well loved figure at the center of the community. In the dec decades preceding his passing, he was seldom seen outside his home. A service will be held Sunday at the First Methodist Church at 1 p.m. All are welcome to come. His survivors include his nephew, Terrence Greenbrier, as well as, in spirit, the people of Boone County, to whom he provided wellness and comfort. Okay. <laughs> what was that noise? Either that was a house or there's like a thunderstorm going on outside. That might be what it is. Okay. Interesting. Desato? Okay, so I think we've seen everything in here. Did we grab the pencil? Oh. Okay. We'll carry it. Oh, we'll just throw it. 
Okay, is there a light? Yep. Looks like a study. Oh, did that open all the way? There we go. Terrence Greenbrier, uh, one over hill, Boone County, Oregon. Uh, does the entire electrical system meet local code? Yes. Are there any deficiency which need correcting? Unclear. Uh, wiring in the house is technically up to safety and amperage requirements. However, structure for the last 100 years. System is frequently unpredictable. Lights blink out for no clear reason. Pressure on floorboards and doorboards disrupt circuit wired directly behind the surface. Properly reworking the electrical system would be highly destructive to the walls, floor, and fixtures of the structure. Uh, after discussion with Mr. Greenbrier, since there are no current safety concerns, issues will not be addressed. Okay, so this is some electrical inspection form, as it says. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, that's a telephone directory? For a minute there, I thought it was Cards Against Humanity. Let's turn on a fan. It's probably kind of stuffy in here, right? Um, completely unasked for, unneeded fact. I always sleep with a fan, even if it's cold. I don't know why. I think I need the sound. The killing of JFK, a theory. Uh, you've seen the movie. Discover the truth. Okay. It's a book. I did not mean to just throw that on the floor. That's kind of rude. Did we look in here? We did, didn't we? Okay. Okay, what's in here? Nothing? Hmm. Three ring binder. Um, apparently useful. Useless. <laughs> we'll just throw the glass. Yeah. You can do better. JFK. A lot of things on JFK. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Pioneer CLD D703 combination laser disc compact disc player for $999.99. Oh, the sounds. <laughs> CU CLD 098 remote with backlight double sided play. Headphone out, display on, off, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they say that a jack of all trades is a master of none. I have to disagree. Mastery is not a question of specialization, but sureness of purpose and dedication to craft. If you happen to be in the market for accommodation LD slash CD player, you'll be glad to know that Pioneer seems to share this particular end ends. Okay. Question mark. <laughs> what is that? Just a p oh, there's something under it. <clears throat> a letter to Terrence Greenbrier. Oh, can I read that? <laughs> like, I have to ask myself that. Uh, dear Terrence, I write on what I hope and imagine is a joyous season. Uh, news reaches me that you. are newly married to a wonderful young woman. I have had more than a little time for to coincide any past and my what? Oh, to consider my past and my family and thoughts have her Oh, and thoughts have often lingered on your development and welfare on the 10 year 10 years uh, we last met okay your marriage <laughs> it's hard to read your marriage gives me much assurance in this regard 
You are always welcome on Arbor something. I will understand something of you, just you, except this narration. Okay, Oscar, who is it by? I can't, oh, it's the, um, Masa dude, Masa Oren, is that his name? Something like that. Okay, that was very hard to read. Okay, is there a light? Yes. Fresh. Readers tell us about their worst moments. 90210, does anyone still care? No. No, they don't. Grab a tissue box, throw it. Turn on a lamp. Grab a coaster, throw it. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's really loud right there. That's weird. Boom. It's a lid. Okay. The Accidental Pariah. Okay, so Terrence is an author. I should have made that connection a while ago. Apparently, he is obsessed with JFK. And that is really spooky. Oh look, event, I think. Oh no, it's not event. My bad. What is that? Hmm. Okay. So it doesn't look like there's really anything in here to look at other than what we looked at. Okay. Let's go out. Oh, okay. So we're going to need a code. <laughs> okay. Um, how do I get out of it? There. Okay, nothing important, so... We're gonna definitely need a code. The code over here? I don't think so. I mean, it would be kind of pointless to... Well? One nine six nineteen sixty three. I mean, it's a four-digit number. We'll just try it. It's probably not it. No. I didn't think so. But it was worth a try. Okay, let's go out. I'm sure we'll find the code in a bit. Northwest Weather Service reports high winds. Okay. Oh, it's a mixtape. I think. Or just a cassette tape, but either way, it's music. Huh? The Andromeda staring at me. <laughs> uh, the Heaven at the Edge of the World. Samantha Greenbrier, Grade 2? Story of the Turtle People, Part 1. I would read that. I would read about Turtle People. Okay, is there anything behind the door? No. Sam thought this might help Dad making friends. <laughs> a book on making friends. I mean, you maybe that, that would feeling help where someone. The first but... moment you see someone, it's like they have a big gold star around them, and you have to get to know them. Well, there's this girl. I think she's a senior. She's usually dressed kind of punk, but sometimes I see her in this like army uniform. She's always drawing in this notebook. 
looking so intense. I had no idea how I would ever, like, have an excuse to talk to her. Till I noticed she and her friends hang out and play Street Fighter at the 7-Eleven every day after Street school. Street Fighter, yes. All right. So weird. Oh, we got some punk. Nice. By the way, I would play Street Fighter so hard right now. Okay. Um. Oh. Okay, it's telling us to crouch. Okay, it looks like uh, cords for a VCR. So maybe we have to find a VCR to plug in. Because it's not plugged in. Hauntings and culture, guys. Sounds like something I would read. Okay, nothing to see here. The X-Files! Oh my god! That was my favorite show of the 90s. The last season, not great. The last two seasons, not great. The finale, terrible. Still a great show. It's mom's old mug. Okay. Oh, what's that? Matchbook. Okay, I still think that we're gonna have to find a VCR at some point. Is there a VCR over here? No, I don't think so. Probably gonna find it in a different room. We read that, right? Oh, it's a coaster. Yeah, we didn't read the coaster. Okay. So I think we've got everything here that we need to look at. Turn the fan on. Just in case. Okay, let's continue. U.S. National Forestry Manual. Northwest region prescribed burn procedures and pres precautions. Okay. Uh, a bunch of coupons. An eraser. Okay. Ooh. more of our book or one of our books Samantha please give this to your mother Janice thank you for having Danny over to your new home he has missed having his friend Samantha in the neighborhood very much uh, Danny asked if he could lend Samantha his Nintendo street biting tape and I gave him my permission he needs to spend his time less time with those games anyway. No hurry, returning it. Uh, let Samantha know that she is welcome back to our house to visit anytime. Sincerely, Mary Schultz, or Schultz, or Schultz. One of those. Or maybe none, I could have got it wrong. When you live in one place your whole life, your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Daniel only got weirder over the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. Really? But he did always have the good Nintendo games. <laughs> Maybe I'll give him a call. What? So he got weird, but she's still... Default friends. Okay, so that's what we just listened to. So he got weird, but she's still cool with borrowing. It's Nintendo games. I see how it is. Ooh, a record player. Somehow I always knew. 
Samantha Greenbrier. Below are two stories, the events all out of order. Uh, get a sheet of lined paper, write reproductive system, worksheet six on the top, then choose uh, one of the two stories, A or B, and rewrite it. Begin to put the title in your name, find a topic, sentence to begin your paragraph, put the sentences in chrono chronological order, make sure the last sentence is a good concluding statement. Uh, the menstrual cycle. Okay. Well, that's informative. <laughs> I am in the pro I am in the testicles. Alrighty. Okay, let me. It's really distracting, so I'm gonna turn that off. <laughs> the menstrual cycle at Novella. The early morning of September 1st, 1939, Essa Glatz stares out the window of the train as it travels from Vienna back to her home village of William in Poland. I know I said that wrong. As the train rumbles along and the sun rises over the countryside, she can only think of her dear Beroslav, the boy she is engaged to Wednesday. Is that what it says? Oh, <laughs> engaged to wed. Wednesday? What the hell? Uh, that would make much more sense. What? Meanwhile, deep within her guts, an ovum starts to develop as this train approaches its destination. Her heart races. The lining of her uterus is getting thick and soft. As Essa steps off the train, her eyes dart quickly across the gathered crowd. Uh, then, there, her dear Boris. Still in the baker's smock, he must have dropped his early morning duties at his father's shop to come meet her. Her heart skips a beat. The ovary releases the ovum. It travels through the fallopian tube. Over the pleasing of the steam edges, a deep hum grows. It's coming from the sky. Dark shadows pass over the station. A whistling sound. Essa, her thoughts only seconds faster than the bombs, uh, what? Uh, reaches out toward her dear Boris across the crowd. Their eyes lock and the moment freezes. The flash and smoke envelops him almost instantly. Jeez. <clears throat> in the assault by German forces, at least 75% of people in our hometown were killed. The rest, including Essa, and for a time, Boris, huddle in a half-destroyed church. He is blind. His legs are missing. Bandaged with torn bedsheets, Essa's egg will not be meeting a sperm... <laughs> it dissolves. What? This is weird and disturbing. About two weeks later, Boris loses his grip on life. Essa has given her rations to keep Boris alive. In the end, nothing can save him. Since the lining of the uterus is not needed for pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. Um, Essa vows to survive. She sets off to join the Polish resistance as a daring spy in Soviet or Soviet or whatever. Um, another ovum starts to develop in one of her ovaries, and the process begins all over again. It is incredible how the incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. Okay, D me, D me, see me. I can't read or pronounce or do anything. But yeah, it says see me. So maybe the teacher was disturbed by that little story. Perhaps. I don't know. I think it was creative. It wasn't boring. The Dave Brubick Quartet. Okay, did we miss anything in here? Let's make sure. Can we go behind the bar? Oh, we can. Oh. March 3rd, 1976. Dear Mr. Greenbrier, I write to inform you that, unfortunately, Mercury Books will be unable to publish your follow-up to The Accidental Pariah. Despite the low sales of The Accident Accidental Savior, uh, we went ahead with publication of the second books in hope of the Jussel Russell series catching on. However, sales of the second book have in fact been lower than those of the first, and so our stewardship of the series must end here. It has been a pleasure working as your publisher, and we wish you 
and John Russell, the best in the future and the bars. Sincerely, Donald... It doesn't really say... Okay, Donald Fripps. I thought it said Donald Trump. Okay, so this guy seems like he, um, kind of a failed author then. By failed, we mean sales. It doesn't mean a failure of self. You don't have to be financially successful to be successful. Although it helps. Okay, so... Napkins, okay. I think we can move on from here. Hopefully we didn't miss anything. More coupons. I die. A note. Katie, please tell mom and dad sorry about the stuff that's missing. Same. Okay, why did that not open? Hi, Lonnie. So if you wanted to come over to my house still... This afternoon, that would be cool. I can drive. It's kind of far, but I can drive you home too. So hopefully that's fine. My back and leave this in my walker if you are, if you <laughs> still want to, and we can meet in the parking lot after the six. Okay, Samantha. Yeah, I am totally in. See you there. Then I am going to kick your, kick you are butt. Get ready. Okay. I think they mean it. Street Fighter. So you know what they say about the best light plans of mice and men? Yeah, turns out it applies to Street Fighter too. At least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but all that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. So after I was finished getting my butt kicked, I followed them outside while they smoked. And that was when she asked me if I was that psycho house girl. Hmm. But then she said she's always really wanted to see the psycho house. Okay. Her name is Lonnie. She's okay. coming over tomorrow. Oh, Lonnie is a girl. Okay, so this door is locked. Can we use the key? Probably not. No. Okay. So we're obviously going to have to find a key. Why am I doing that? So now, maybe we will go upstairs. This is a rather big house. I got my ticket home from Europe. I get back on June 6th, but it's a really late flight because that was the cheapest, so it gets in at midnight. But don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport so you don't have to pick me up. Like, really seriously, you don't have to. Okay, so, love you. See you soon. Bye. Okay. Sam, uh, Daniel from the old neighborhood called. He wants to come see the new house. Call him back. Mom, Daniel is a total weirdo. The only reason I ever have... ever hang out with him in the first place is he had a Nintendo when we were little. Well, don't... If he's weird, don't hang out with him. Seriously, that's not going to keep weirdos at bay. If someone's weird, leave them alone so you don't get caught up in weirdness. 
Did we read this? No. Um, directions to work from the new home. Left on Crabtree? Crabtree? Crabtree. Uh, right on Baythorn, exit on 47 North. Right on to 20Z. Or Z, Zoe's. Entrance on right. Travel time, one hour, ten minutes. Hmm. Wonder if we're gonna have to travel. Hopefully not for an hour. <laughs> In real time, at least. Okay. There's a closet. It's a badge. Janice Greenbrier? Hmm. Oh, board game. Over the Alps. A novel traveling game. We'll just throw it on the ground. Because that's what we do. Dear Jan. Are we Jan? Or are we Sam? I don't think we're Sam. I don't know. I don't know who we are. Dear Jen, it's so good to hear from you again. All this new house business sounds like quite the adventure. Remember the little dorm room we shared freshman year when we were miserable fantasizing about our dream homes? I always had wanted a mansion. You said you wanted a home in the woods. Um, look who got both. Oh, we have a mansion in the woods. Uh, somebody up there likes you. I could use some of that magic. Send me some letter. A lot of numbers. I'll play them. Seriously. Uh, but I shouldn't be complaining about this good old split level we've had since Bob got transferred to Winnipeg. We just got new vinyl siding. Jealous yet? Uh, let me know if you want to trade places. Uh, so, how are the gals doing? Has Katie left on her big European adventure yet? Uh, speaking of jealous, right back soon. I love you. Rumi and Carol. Okay. Carol was Jan's old roommate. I did not mean to do that. No! No! So I think we're going upstairs now. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. See how big the upstairs is. Controlled burn scheduled for Boone County. Boone County. Plumes of smoke will rise above the north eastern region of Boone County over the better part of next week as a part of a forest service run controlled burn of overgrown sections of the Flint Lock National Forest. Forestry crews have been preparing the area for months. The burn operation will take place between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and possibly into Thursday, depending on the speed of progress, according to the Forestry Service. In addition to removing the dead and overgrown vegetation that can lead to wildfires in drier moments, uh, the operation will serve as a valuable training tool for forestry and firefighting personnel involved, said senior conservationist Janice Greenbrier. Okay. Um, smoke will likely linger in the area through the following weekend. Okay, I saw a um, name tag for Janice in the closet. And that letter was to Jan. So interesting. Monday, couples, bowling, Wednesday, cooking class, uh, take apron, Friday, ballroom dancing, hmm. uh, Monday, couples, bowling, uh, Wednesday, cooking class, Friday, ballroom, okay, so it looks like the same thing every week, except the end, it says cook the big meal for 
Terry and Sam, or Sam. Okay. We have a comp. Is there anything in here? Oh. Notice of temporary personnel transfer. Bruce Pendleton, head of personnel, State Forestry Service. To aid in the upcoming prescribed burn operation, a ranger with expertise in the procedure is being transferred to the station at Flint Hood National Forest, effective 9-22-94. Uh, please see attached personnel files. The overseeing officer at Flint Lock Forestry Station, senior con conservationist Janice Greenbrier, is charged with the supervision of transferred personnel. The duration of transfer will be based upon performance evaluation as well as the recommendations of the overseeing officer. Officer. Signed, Bruce Pendleton. Okay. Looks like some cards. Oh, it's a cassette. Cassette case? Oh. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is, like, instantly just right. I gave her the grand Psycho House tour, and mm. took my revenge on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know, I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home, and she gave me this tape, and said, you have got to listen to this. Oh. I haven't stopped playing is it this since. tape? That'd be good timing if it was. Oops, no. Uh, I want to pick it up. Okay. So is there a tape player in here? Oh, that's what this is. Okay. There. Hmm. Okay, that's really bad. Okay, we got a Nintendo game. What is it? Super Spitfire. Journey of Crystal. Okay. Man, Sam had this in like fourth grade. <laughs> Cute. Oh, is that a rabbit playing keyboard? Sweet. I like it. Oh, we grab a book. What? Holy Bible. Okay. Boring. Just kidding. Kind of. Okay, why won't that open? Is that a bug? Okay, that door won't seem to open. So that's weird. Hopefully there's nothing in there important. Oh, we need another combo. Oh. One one nine. <laughs> he has a walker in his room? I haven't had that much to drink, Jody Foster. How many fingers am I holding up? You better not have been reading my secret diary again. Here you go, Mitten. Have some Pate. Gross. Meow. It's pretty cool. Okay, I think we need a combination, obviously. I want to believe. X Files. I love this game. <laughs> it's staggy. Boom. Anything under it? Okay, are we hiding anything under the bed? Okay. Brochure. This is the one me and my dad are building. 
want to go for a ride when it's done? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay, so I really think we need a cone. I would think that maybe it was hiding under the bed. Samantha Greenbrier, year 11, teacher of Fletcher. Period 5, subject, shop. Metalworking, engraving, grade C. Not a challenging assignment. Metal plaque for family portrait. Reasonable subject, but not complex. When I said that mom and dad should be replaced with parents' names, I did not mean just to add them underneath. Acceptable leveling on edges. Show more pride in work. Okay. If you say so. Uh, I want to know where that locker combination is. Hmm. Okay, it's not there. No. Alright, where is it? I want to believe. Sam, I think the creative writing track would be perfect for you. Miss Blacker? Oops. Reed College, one of the nation's most lauded private liberal arts and science institutes, is proud to announce its 14th annual summer program for youth scholars. The program invites students of grade 10 and 11 to attend lectures, um, workshops, and discussion covering wide varieties of intellectual pursuits by focusing on small group sections and close facility faculty student interactions. The program encourages young minds to thoroughly explore, er explore areas of growth and enrichment as they approach the threshold of higher education. The program is divided into distinct cracked subject matter, but students are encouraged to select sessions from secondary cracks along with that to which they are admitted on campus housing and meals are provided as part of the program's tuition. Um, scholarships for the summer program are available based on merit and need, judged by each student's submitted portfolio and financial documentation. Uh, the summer program cracks are anthropology, art and art history. I took an art history class. That was fun. Classics, English, creative writing, history, humanities, mathematics, philosophy, religion, sociology, theater. Beyond the benefits of the program itself, three students from each track will be offered a full scholarship for the first year of Reed if they decide to attend the university full-time as undergraduates and are accepted by Reed's admission board. Educators and students at student schools have been provided with documentation outlining the specific requirements for each track and processes for submitting portfolios and applications. Students accepted to the program will be notified at the beginning of the calendar year 1995. Explore and learn. Okay. That was a long read. Nail polish. Nailed it! <laughs> okay. That's funny. Kind of. Hairbrush. Turned over drawer. Hmm. Okay. So where the hell are we going to get these combinations we need? Hmm. It's weird. All the VCRs are gone too. I've noticed. Okay, so we'll go out. Backpack. Hey Sarah, do you want to see Pulp Fiction after school at the Coliseum? Um, it came out last weekend and Todd won't shut up about it. So either it's good or we can make fun of him for liking it. Uh, my mom is supposed to cook dinner for us tonight for a change. But I can just ditch out on it probably. What time? Also, isn't that movie supposed to be really violent? Am I going to barf? Was. According to Todd, it is pretty hardcore. I guess Uma Thurman gets stabbed in the heart with a heroin needle, so that's kind of hilarious. Also, something about cheeseburgers is important. Todd wants to see it again. Um, 715, is that okay? Don't barf. Yeah, don't barf. And there's a, <laughs> a barfing cheeseburger. That's cute.
Okay. Oh, the bathroom. The trusty bathroom. Toilet paper. Okay. Hmm. Wait, what? I guess one's broken. Is there gonna be something behind it? There is! Unless it's just towels. Hmm. Okay. Oh, is that blood? <laughs> or is that hair bleed? Hair dye? Lonnie brought her hair dye. It's hair dye. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help. Dying hair is weirdly intimate. Oops. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. That's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked into the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy or good or whatever. But that's when she said, you're so beautiful. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something, but I waited, and the moment was gone. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Sternly worded letter. Stop leaving every damn light on in the house. You're as bad as your sister. Daniel called again. He wants... His Nintendo game back. I wonder if Daniel's a psycho. To whom it may concern, I, Samantha Greenbuyer, am 17 years old and therefore an independent, fully functional human being. Uh, the fact that you still forbid me for going into the city on my own is frankly absurd. Compare with Katie, who is only three, three years older than me, and yet you allowed her to go all the way across an ocean to another continent of its own. I just want to spend an evening in a normal, totally safe city on my own, like a human being, and since you may also remember that I have my own car now, and you can't really stop me. Warmest regards, your daughter Samantha. Okay. Oh. Did we come out of there? Wear goggles, rubber bands. Rubber gloves when handling anything in this room. Okay. Yeah, we already came in here. Okay. Okay. I wonder why there are no VCRs. There's just the hookups for them. That's strange. Mm, mitten. That's cute. Aww. Love cat. Caitlin, age five. Cute. Hmm. Mom's purse. Can we look inside it? No. Okay. Dear Mom, Dad, and Sam, I am in the shuttle. If I said that right. This is my second passage through Janelle. I'm on my way back from London, this time going to Brussels, Belgium. Sorry I didn't write you on the way back to London, but I was excited about the... Don't know. 
Um, London was great, Dad. I know you've always wanted to visit, and I think you really should. You'll love it. If you all wanted to come back here as a family sometime, I guess I could be convinced. Love you all, Katie. Book, Holy Bible. It looks like there's a letter. Oh, I guess not. Okay, anything in the box? Nope. Watercolor techniques for floral and still lifes. Okay. Uh, oh. What was that? Oh, okay. A ghost game. Cool. Escape from Ghost Mansion. Age 8 and up. Avoid the ghosts of the mansion and make your escape with your wits intact. Okay. Interesting. Something here. Let's see. Hmm. Band-Aids. Shaving cream. Toothbrush. Come. Do we not open these? Okay. Are they just decorative? Hmm. Oh wow, fancy. Candle. I kind of wish we could light some candles to just give it a little bit more mood, right? Ugh. <laughs> After the honeymoon? Okay. Why ugh? Okay, I don't see anything important in here. Hmm. Dear Jan, oh honey, let me tell you, I understand how you feel. Bob and I have had our own down periods. It's become a bit of a way of life, actually. You get used to each other. You live your own lives in the same home. The kids grow up. They go away. I'm sure this isn't helping, is it? Don't worry. Terry will get over whatever is distracting him. Things will go back to normal. And as for Sam being distant, that's a teenager thing. Uh, nothing to do about that, or worry about it. Uh, in the meantime, though, the controlled burn that sounds like quite the adventure. But let's cut to the chase. This new ranger, they don't... Wait, what? They don't? That's what I want to hear about. Ranger Rick? You have to be kidding me. It's too perfect. You have to tell me everything. And pictures. I want the whole package. Wait, that sounded wrong. Um, keep your chin up until Terry is out of his slump. And in the meantime, write more letters to your old friend, Carol. She adores you. Carol. Okay, Carol sounds cool. He wants to know more about Ranger Rick. Oh. More clothes. Clothes. Clothes, clothes. And more clothes. Okay. Hmm, I just keep thinking maybe we're missing something, but probably gotta get through the house. So let's continue. Whoops. 
Okay. Oh, what is that? Ooh, creepy. Katie, Mom and Dad, you were going to make up the guest room for you to stay in. Mom and Dad were going to make up the guest room for you to stay in over summer, but you came home in such short notice that they weren't around to do it. You can use my room if you want. I won't be needing it anymore. Sam. Okay. Where's the light? Oh, here it is. Books. Misc. Miscellaneous. Ooh, is there something in here? Oh. Hey, Sam. Uh, you were asking what my JROTC ribbons meant. This is a handy guide. Okay. Orienteering. This means that the army thinks I am... I can find my way around. Rifle team. The army has branded me as a certified killing machine. Adventure training. I'm a born adventurer and no borders can hold me. The army recognizes this. Uh, so. It, you didn't think I was cool before. Now you do. Lonnie. Okay. Composition book. <laughs> this is about ghosts. Sighting journal. A tall shadow in the upstairs hall. When I rounded the corner, no one was there. How tall was Uncle Oscar? Notice I was not wearing my glasses. September 9th, or 3rd, 1994, 12.44 a.m. A faint voice coming from the bottom of the stairs. I said hello. Did not investigate. Probably was the furnace. September 9th, 1944, 4.11 p.m. Uh, poured milk from a carton in the fridge. It was spoiled. Pretty sure I read that spirits can sour milk. <laughs> okay. Ghost milk. Ooh. Um, October 9th, 1994, 11.24 p.m. Lonnie says she feels a presence in the TV room. I suddenly begin to feel cold. Uh, we built a protective pillow fort. October 12th, 1994, 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. Wow, all day. Lonnie and I employ Ouija board as a medium. Disturbing messages are conveyed from the other side. Oscar is definitely here. October 28th, 1994, 10 p.m. to October 29th, 4 a.m. Enlisted Lonnie to stay up all night and help patrol premises, recording any signs of otherworldly presence. Lonnie reported many sightings, but all remained unconfirmed. Possible ectoplasm in the probably leaky roof. Uh, sample taken just in case. Despite our, due to our best efforts, we both fell asleep around 4 a.m. We, all in all, it was a successful night. Okay. So they were ghost hunting. It's always fun when you're a kid. Just usually there aren't really any ghosts. In this case, there probably is. Okay, I don't see anything in here. Hmm. Really? Okay. Hmm. Anything here? No? Alright, I don't see anything. Hmm. Okay. Okay, this door's open. Cassette. Okay, is there a cassette tape? Here it is. More music. I can't read with that loud music. Richard Patermock, Supervisor Janner Greenbrier, evaluation period 92-94-11-194. Um, Supervisor comments, Ranger Patermock has been indispensable during the course of the prescribed burn 
preparation and execution. I believe his expertise and dedication has been the deciding factor in the success of a very complex and challenging conservation effort. In the effort of the Flint Flock Forest Staff, Rick's contributions to daily operations have become essential to the outfit's continuing success. To this end, I will be formally submitting paperwork requesting his permanent reassignment to this facility. Janice Greenbrier. Okay. Halloween show. Don't forget your costume. The Misfits. You're awesome. Um, cool. Okay. Oops. Sometimes you just have to lie to mom and dad. Like when yeah. Lonnie asked me to see a band with her and stay over at her friend's place in the city after. That's a lie to mom and dad's situation. But it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome. And everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Between two songs, Lonnie leaned over and said, how do you like your first show? I was so happy. Mm. I felt tears starting in my eyes. And then she up and hugged me. I think she could tell. Okay. Lonnie, holy crap, I was in the library and I noticed something in the corner. And I found a secret passage. And it had Oscar's creepy old stuff in it. Okay. Oh my god, I've got to see this. We're skipping six. Okay, so let's find a library after this. Wow, look at that. Okay. So where are we? Okay. We're in the sewing room, I guess. So we're going to want to go downstairs. Cool. Okay, it looks like a costume. Open sewing table. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Oh. Okay. You saved her from the raging flames. And then things really heated up. Okay. Uh-oh. How'd they heat up? We know. Okay. So maybe we should go downstairs now. We'll see if there's any other rooms up here, though. Sam's dark room. Do not enter if red lights are on. Oh. Annex locked. <laughs> what did we just throw? Oh. Okay, so we need a key for this. Hmm. Okay, well, let's go to the library. Okay, we're in the foyer. Okay, so we're gonna go to the basement. Okay, what is this? Okay, that's the locked door. That's dad's office. Okay, but we have to go through his office to get to the library. Okay. Hmm. 
Oh, look at that. Spooky. Wow, news articles? Hidden compartments found three. Ghost hunters Sam and Lonnie secret house investigation. Library, upstairs boy, your evidence of the supernatural discovered zero. Okay. Hidden compartments marked on the map. Okay. Wait, is the light on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so we're right back to where we were. That's weird. Hmm. Okay, wait. Oh, here we go. Private, do not read. Heaven at the edge of the world. Allegra and her scouting party peered down warily through the dense canopy of rustling leaves from their perch high on the forest branches. Mere feet away, sunlight shone brightly off the inner ice walls of the glacial basin in which the forest grew. It was a strange sight indeed, such lushness juxtapositioned with the frigid ice formations. Allegra leapt forward without hesitation, bounding through the high branches. The first mate had been captured by the Green Glacier's Amazonian tribe. His life hung in the balance. We have to hurry, Allegra's party followed behind, moving quietly as a breeze through the granary. Allegra landed in the clearing and shouted stop. She saw the clean Amazonian up on her pedestal, reaching for the lever that would drop her first mate into the vat below. She shouted no. She flung her saber at the Amazon's reaching hand, but it was too late. The first mate screamed as he fell toward the water um, and splashed down, and all was eerily silent. Allegra looked on, frozen in fear and remorse. She had been a moment too late. But then from the vat, something began to emerge. A head of dark brown hair, just like the first mate's, then the shoulders and sleeves of his coat soaking wet. But as the figure stood and the water poured down, Allegra saw that the first mate had changed. He was no longer a man at all. In fact, what looked at her were the eyes, the face, the hair, the hands, and body of a woman still in the first mate's clothes. Still, the first mate, he, she, spoke in a soft, clear voice. Captain, the Amazonian queen said, she is one of us now. She is ours. Allegra drew her magical flintlock pistol from her belt, and her crew readied their swords. Allegra glared into the queen's eyes and said, That's the love of my life, and you can't have her. Okay, weird. The safe combo! Okay, turn right three times. Okay, it's half. So let's go get the other half. There's one more hidden compartment, I believe. Yes. Across from Sam's room. So we gotta go back upstairs. Yeah. Okay, so Sam's room is like, um, probably the one with the enter carefully sign or whatever. Maybe. Or is this it? No. I think I know which one it is. This one, right? I think so. Sam's room, okay. So it's across from Sam's room. All right, let's, oh, hey, look at that. Oh, the Ouija board. Ouija boards are kind of fun. I did one a long time ago. It kind of freaked us out, but we were kids. Um, but they're kind of fun to play with. Not too spooky, really. 
Hello, hello. Who are you? Oscar. What do you want? To come back. Okay, so obviously they wrote down the answers of the Ouija board. Alright. Completed combination to Sam's locker added to backpack. And this is Sam's room, so... Perfect. Okay, to open, first number, turn right three times, stop, turn left once. Number to stop, full turning, passing one, turn right, so it's right, left, right. So, O, L. So, O, 51. O, 5, O, 1. Ah, look at that. Shannon Doherty, wow. Okay. Oh, and Julian Anderson. X Files. Hells yes. Pack of cigarettes. Oh man. That kid. We all did it. Oh. Oh, a key. Okay. Lonnie well, came over today. But everything was different. Uh oh. She was sitting at my desk chair, and she wouldn't look at me. Finally, I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something wrong that night in the city. Like I must think. But I said no. There was nothing wrong. I just wanted Got to it. say... But I couldn't find the words. I felt like I was going to cry, but I wasn't sad. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Oh, basement. Okay. Lonnie. Do you think you could ever... And that's when she kissed me. <laughs> oh my. Okay. I done went backwards, so we need to go downstairs now and find the basement. So this is definitely a um, coming of age story, perhaps. Something happens, obviously. Something bad. So this should be the basement. No? No. Basement's on the other side. Okay. I don't know where I'm going. I never do. Okay. Here we go. Creepy basements, cobwebs, spider webs, probably. Chips, potato, delicious. Ooh. Dear Samantha, I would like to cordially thank you for having me to your abode for the Thanksgiving holiday and your lovely family. I enjoyed the flavorful potatoes and also. Um, it was weird being around your parents for that long, but it was pretty funny uh, how impossible it is for your dad not to be awkward for more than 30 seconds at a time. Cute. Uh, very cordially yours, your close friend, and confidence. Why? Okay. Oh. Dear Miss DeSota, allow me to take the opportunity to thank you in kind for being such a gracious host of the festivities of your father's estate following the aforementioned meal with my parents. Your family Thanksgiving feast was more enjoyable for the two events, I must say, of the two events. I especially appreciated the time I spent with your grandmother, who is a lovely woman with a sterling taste and refined air. Let's do it again. Same time next year, shall we? Indeed. Madame Samantha Greenbuyer. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. Weird.
Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, we had the light on. STS. It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around... Well, you know. So you could say we're dating. But it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. It now is. when we get off the phone or go home for the night. Or it's just quiet and we're alone. We say I love you. Okay. It's different now. <laughs> Below are two stories. The events are all out of order. Get a she. Okay, the menstrual cycle. Okay, we read this. Oh, but this is different. An ovum starts to develop while the ovum is developing. The lining of the uterus is getting thick and soft. No, we, read, we did read this. I think. The ovary releases the ovum. It travels through the fallopian tube. If the egg and sperm meet, it dissolves. About two weeks later, since the lining of the uterus is not needed for pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. Um, another ovum starts to develop at um, one of the ovaries, and the process begins again. It is incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. Yeah, we did read that. Oh, wait, what, what happened? Hmm. Katie. Oh. Furnace. And an electrical box. Reed College, okay. Uh, January 24th, 1995, Samantha Greenbrier. Dear Samantha, congratulations. I'm pleased to inform you of your admission to the creative writing track of the Reed College Summer Program for Youth Scholars in 1995, since so you got accepted. Uh, we believe you have much to contribute to the Reed College community. Based on your portfolio and academic record, I am pleased to offer you financial aid to cover 75% of the summer's program tuition and fees. We attach documentation, uh, delineates your schedule, options, secondary track choices, and your dormitory assignment. Please remember to submit the attached form if you wish to be eligible for one of the three Reed full-time undergraduate scholarships to be awarded to exemplary students at the end of each summer program. We very much look forward to your attendance. Again, congratulations on your admission and best wishes. I'm so stupid sometimes. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing, and I was all making plans like, you should come visit me, stay in my dorm room. But she said, Sam, I ship out on June 6th. I was like, ship out? To where? She said, to basic training. What did you think I was doing all that ROTC stuff for? I guess she's been planning to join the army right after high school since she was like 12. And I guess she's really going to do it. So I was like, after graduation, I'm just never going to see you again? She said, let's just have fun while we can. Hmm. Okay, typical story. Scrap. 14K heart pendant in two halves, customizable with up to 10 letters, 10 letters, names, dates, initials, anything you can dream of. Gift box imported. LNS. Lonnie and Samantha. Okay. Okay, and there's something <clears throat> attached to this. Okay, we need to find a light. Oh, it's still really hard to read. Okay. Really? 
There we go. Thank you for sending a copy of your newly published book and author's first published manuscript is uh, momentous and a momentous occasion. I read it this afternoon. I certainly recognize my son in the subjects of the matter. My author's work is the externalization of that which holds dear and that which he fears. And in this respect, I believe your work was successful. But the lens through which the personal phone shone was needlessly spouted by um, genre cliches and implausible authors speak of their life's milieu in clear and honest tones, the lens crystal that retracts their thoughts without distortion. Oops. I congratulate you on survive surviving the great ordeal that is publication and rest assured the readers of your chosen genre will lap up copies hungrily but I urge you to shed artifice. Um, you can do better with the father's love and encouragement. Oh, wow. His father. Okay. Okay. Stay, Specs. What's that mean? Yolanda DeSado, Miss Samantha Greenbrier. Okay. No. Dear Sam, today's Spanish lesson. I'm so happy you liked the drawing. I was thinking of us when I drew it. I knew you'd be able to tell. You'd love Mexico, I think. Probably. Uh, the nature here is totally different than back home. I keep thinking about algebra. In the first mate lost... Allegra, and the first mate lost on the Meister? Oh, mysterious island where even the plants are out to get them. And then I think of them together, out there in the wilderness together, and I start thinking of you again. I lie here in bed and I can almost feel you. I've been trying to save it up for when we get together again. I haven't done a good job, okay, but I tried. Okay, enough about that. The lost letter... You got, got to me the day before we start driving back north. We'll be racing this letter home. If I get home first, we can read it together. And yes, I'm taking tons of photos. We'll have to spend so much time in the dark room, Lonnie. Okay. Girls Out, the band formerly known as Cub Scout set list. Role model authority main squeeze telling stories instruction first mate self. Girl Scouts and denial. Okay. Todd's band lost their singer. Todd said he sucked. Lonnie said he got sick of Todd's shit and he was complaining about needing a new singer so Lonnie was like Girl I Scouts can sing. Uh, it's a band. And they were all kind of like you can? And she was like probably but she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now. And I finally got to see them play in Todd's basement today. And she's actually really amazing. And I feel so proud when she's on stage. It's incredible being in awe of someone you love. Hmm. So everybody knows it's like a temporary situation till she ships out in June. But till then, I'm going to be at every single show. Okay. Okay, well, we got a paper scrap. Let's get out of the dark where we can actually read it. Oops. Oh, jeez. What's happening? <laughs> Why won't the door open? There we go. Order this month, two oven brand. Oh wait, two brandy. Um. Okay, it's a recipe of some sort. Believe this arrangement shall hold for 
some time, okay? Postcard. I'm writing to you from Multimesh Falls. I'm here on this stupid class trip, which is stupid because it's March and I don't know if anyone running the school has been to Oregon, but it's cold and rainy. It's shit in March. Uh, wish you were here. Oh, wait, you are here because I'm writing this to you in the gift shop. Oh, shit. Love you, Lonnie. They tell you to stick with the group on field trips, Katie. There's a reason for that. Lonnie and I snuck off on the side paths at Multnomah Falls and got a little lost. Okay, a lot lost. Like, for hours. Right before the bus left, we found a trail and came running down the path, soaked and covered in mud, shouting for the bus not to leave. The school called home. Mom and Dad said, you didn't get into trouble like this before you met that Lonnie girl. But I don't think they know, no, about us. The kids at school, though, I'm really afraid that's a whole other story. <laughs> Stick with the group, Katie. Stick with the group. Okay. Oh. Okay, we'll go back up. The Psycho House Girl. The coolest stuff about being the Psycho House Girl. Cool thing number one. Everybody in the hall thinks you don't know they're looking at you and whispering as you walk past because I guess they haven't heard a peripheral. Okay. That's a lie to mom and dad situation, but it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just loud and real and awesome. And everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Truth. Costumes, skeletons and devils, cheerleaders from the Smells Like Teen Spirit video. Nirvana. Uh, one girl dressed as Jackie Kennedy. Okay. Another cassette tape. Heaven's the best seat, terrorist. Alright. Comic book. Women Outlaws. Button. Had enough. Heard enough. Kicking against the patriarchy. Okay. Dear Miss Greenbrier, I appreciate the time and effort you put into writing your letter. It showed initiative and was well written, but it does not change my mind on the matter. Um, when I understand that Miss Desato is a friend of yours, the fact of the matter is that she defaced school property with profanity. The fact that she allegedly defaced her own locker in retaliation for another student doing the same to yours is immature. As her complaint that no other student has been punished for their part in this incident, the fact is that no guilty party has come forward and there has been no convincing evidence as to who might have defaced your locker. In other words, there's no one to punish. I would suggest letting the issue drop, as it will only bring unwanted attention to yourself, which I believe is what you claim this whole incident is about in the first place. Okay. Weird. I don't get Lonnie sometimes. Like, her band, and our zine, and her hair, and everything are all anti-authority. But I watch her in JROTC, and she's doing drills in perfect formation. Following orders, no question. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like, she's going to join the army and then have to... lie? 
about uh -oh. who she is. She said they don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like it was no big deal. This from the girl who trashed her locker to like defend my honor. Uh. I've learned when to stop arguing though. I don't think Lonnie even gets Lonnie sometimes. Okay. Twenty five dollars and three fifty. Earth, wind, and fire. Okay. Cool. Wow, are we like in a whole other section? Where are we? Textbook. Espanol. Hey, Lonnie. Sorry, my mom was such a bitch last night. She hardly ever. She's hardly ever around since her. Forest is like an hour away, and then when she is home, she takes it out all on you. Like, because you're not a member of the family, she knows you won't call her on it, and I'm sorry. Haha, <laughs> it's okay, I know. She's just jealous of our cool and free-willing lifestyles. I feel sorry for you. I'm lucky my mom lives in Florida. You have to have a mom every day. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring up the mom thing like that. I know. I shouldn't complain. No, I'm being serious. My mom is a psycho Christian, and her now husband, Don, is a complete tool. Living in Florida with him is her eternal punishment in my mind. So you'd rather live in with your mom in Florida. <laughs> Funny. Okay. Inside Edition documentary. Investigative team visits camp whose specialists help adolescents overcome deviant behavior and homosexuality. Hmm. That's weird. Katie, you know how mom and dad are. Not exactly super open-minded about things. It feels like every minute I don't spend with Lonnie I spend worrying about them finding out about us. Hmm. And what would happen if they did? You know Dad's joke about the nunnery that he'd tell whenever he brought boys around the old house? I wonder where he'd want to send me. Okay. Uh, Sam, the skull was the coolest thing I found in Mexico, and it was like three bucks. I love it. Merry Christmas. Miss you. Okay. a whole nother part of the house. Mr. and Miss Jonathan Blair request the honor of your presence of the marriage of their daughter Helen Margaret to Mr. Richard Morris Petermarch. Um, Sunday the 4th of June 1995 and half past hour 4 o'clock in the afternoon. At the Lutheran Church, Seaside, Oregon. Okay. Uh, why we do that? Some soda. Ketchup. No mayo. Hmm. I don't know. I was gonna make a joke about having to have mayo if you're white. I don't know. I can say that, right? Okay. Same thing. Sam's schedule, um, working at Crown Burger on Bethel Road. M, W, oh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. Dishwasher, just stuff. The microwave's open. I don't know why we're opening everything, but you never know. 
potato chips. Lots of canned goods. Good to have just in case. In case of a pandemic. There's a lot of pizza in this house. They're making me want pizza. I'm not okay with that. Phone's off the hook. Let's put it back. Okay. Oh, congratulations on your new position, Bruce Pendleton, um, dear Regional Con Conservation Director Greenbrier. Having received your formal acceptance letter, I write to congratulate you on your new position as Regional Conservation Director of the State Forestry Service. We wish you luck in your final weeks of Flintlock National Forest and very much look forward to welcoming you to your new desk in the State Forestry Office at AM at 8 a.m. May 1st. Okay. Just throwing everything around. Okay, it doesn't look like anything to see here. Another cassette tape. I mean, it's going to be music probably, right? Dear Mr. Green Bar, first let me say that I hope this uh, missive finds you well. Hell, it feels like a goddamn miracle that it finds you at all. Do you know how long we've been trying to track you down? Worry not, we aren't the feds, the men in black, or any other sort of creeping fascist bob goblins. In fact, we're on your side. Let me start from the beginning. Unknown Dimension is what you might call a specialist publishing house. We traffic in the weird the ahead of its time, the lost but not forgotten by a small but dedicated group of plugged-in bibliographiles, bibliophiles, um, type of out there mass market shunning visionary expression that ref, ref oh, refuses to take on anything but its own terms. We've had unparalleled run, unparalleled run since your inception four years ago, unearthing and reviving Christ, or zombie-like. Lifeless forms such as NN, Best Man's Message of the Snake Man, It's Inside Me by Jen Speller, Keller, and Email Krager's often banned Venusian Flesh Traders. Uh, but ever since you discovered tattered copies of your accidental series at the church rummage sale in Long Beach, New Jersey, we've been trying to track you down, or track down the author of this weird, and dark American outsider art. It's just a kind of forgotten portal into 20th century civilizations, anxieties, and delusions that our readers lose their minds over. James Bond and Harrison Ford might be in dick swinging heroes in modern suburban Americans want, but John Russell slip my, uh, mild manner insurance agent by day, reckless, reckless history revising sociopath by night, is the twisted peacekeeper that it deserves. It is our mission to bring him back to life. Okay, so you type plenty. What do you want from you? What do we want from you? We want your permission to reprint your work since your original publisher, Mercury Books, folded a decade ago. We want you to supply a new forward for this book to appear in a brand new edition of The Accidental Savior and The Accidental Pariah to be produced by Unknown Dimension as a limited run and marketed directly to our highly discerning customer base. And we want to offer you a portion of the proceeds contract to follow assuming you're interested in coming along with us in this weird odyssey uh, we look forward to embarking with you and to thrusting your work screaming back into the swatting palms of the unsuspecting american public it's about time blast off okay so he got a new book deal good <laughs> Grab hat. Oh. I asked Lonnie what she had to do to get ready to ship out for basic training. She said, not a lot, really. You're not allowed to bring anything with you. 
You have no possessions. No contact with the outside world while you're in basic. You just train hard every day, and then you deploy from there. So, they'll just send her away. To who knows where. The other side of the country. The other side of the world. My mind, like, can't process it. She's really going to be gone. Hmm. Just gone. <clears throat> Sam, your mother and I will be away for a long weekend celebrating our anniversary, June 3rd to the 7th. Uh, we will be camping in the gorge, but we will give you a call on, my, on our way home. Um, sorry the kitchen is still Mio renovated. Mm, okay. Never trust a contractor. 40 is on the table to order pizza while we're gone. Be good, Dad. Pizza money is always... Sweet. I'm sure we can all relate to that growing up. Okay, so we've been pretty much through the kitchen. Right? Okay, time to go out. Is there lights? Don't give up this. Don't give up on this, honey. By Terrence L. Greenbrier. Okay. Is there a light in here? Okay. There we go. Mom's purse. Okay. Take care of our forests. Hi, Jan. I got two tickets for EWF on Thursday, but my girlfriend says she doesn't want to go. Um, her taste in music rears its ugly head again. Uh, so that leaves me with an extra ticket that I thought you might be interested in. More the fun. <laughs> oh, more fun than clearing trash in the freezing rain, right? Oh, clearing brush. I get it. Okay. Towels. Oh, a folder. A zine. Kicking against the patriarchy. Sam, uh, since you refuse to hear us out this afternoon, your mother and I are putting this in writing so that we're absolutely clear. You are grounded for the rest of the month from social and telephone privileges and from using your car for anything except going to and from school. We understand what you're going through, but we can't allow you to continue with this kind of of behavior at school and clearly once your privileges are reinstated we can't allow you to have your bedroom um, door closed with Lonnie is at the house oh uh, this is the last word on the matter get back on course so this won't have to happen again dad okay oops no I want to open now Uh, Sam, since you refuse to hear us out this afternoon, you're... Oh. Okay, I just read that. Ooh, disciplinary referral. Samantha, 421-95. Teacher, whoever that is. Distributing inappropriate materials on school grounds. Phone call to students' parents out of school suspension. Uh-oh. What was she distributing? Oh, here we go. I had an interesting talk with mom and dad tonight. One you were never going to need to have. I mean, you've known, right? I've known. I've known since, like, she -Ra. Mom and dad didn't, I guess. But they saw the zine and the stuff on the locker, and oh. they were like, is there something we should know about you and Lonnie? 
Uh oh. And so here's the thing. I was prepared for them to be mad or disappointed or start crying or something, but they were just in denial. You're too young to know what you want. You and Lonnie are just good friends. Right. You just haven't met the right boy. Mm. It's a phase. That's what I didn't see coming. That they wouldn't even respect me enough to believe me. Well, joke's on them. Because they're in for one very long phase. Uh, right? Okay. Um, while she was talking, I think I saw a letter somewhere. And then I walked by it. Oh, here it is. First off, congratulations, Janice uh, Greenbrier, Regional Director. And I say congratulations because, come on, you're going to take the job, right? What are you waiting for? An unpaved, unground, engraved invitation. Call them back. But in the meantime, let's discuss the little outing you had with your favorite flannel-clad hunk. What a blast. But you sound like you're reading a little into an innocent night out. Um, your peer... Oh, you sure there's something wrong? Uh, you said he has an out-of-town girlfriend. Uh, you're sure they're not serious? Okay. Um, I do... What? Okay. Do we have to figure this out, then? We'll see back other next in person. Enough with the letters. I owe you a congratulatory uh, margarita boss lady soon, Carol. Ooh, margarita, yum. <sighs> okay, I gotta say, this game is a little bit long, and it's a little slow. It's starting to wear me out a little bit. Um, so, I don't know. There's not a lot of horror going on here. The story is interesting, but I think they could have added a little bit more scary stuff into it, if you know what I mean. Bathroom. Magazine. Mmm, potatoes. More towels and toilet paper. Okay. Just a bathroom. Oh, a sink. No, not a bathroom. A utility room. Green room. Interesting. Okay. Strong pines. A couple's counseling retreat. Uh oh. Somebody having trouble? Oh, wait. Was something on the back? Oh. Booked. Okay. Dear Kaz, I can't tell you what a joy it is to see John Russell back in print. Thank you very much for sending along copies of the new edition. The cover art is really something. I know you said the Unknown Dimension isn't in the business of printing new material, but this revived interest in my work has brought on a wave of inspiration, resulting in a manuscript that completes John Russell's journey, which I think you may find intriguing. It is a reflective and introspective piece without forgetting the excitement and weirdness the unknown dimension readers expect. I hope you, this might be an interesting, exciting new direction for unknown dimensions to pursue. At the very least, I'm grateful that John Russell's adventures didn't come to an end quite when I thought it had. My thanks and regards, Terrence. Okay. Typewriter. Cover copy. It's been almost 20 years since John Russell heard the call. Twice he saved a president's life. He's practically forgotten the days of the future of danger and excitement these days where he mattered. So when that familiar rip in time opens in front of him and his handlers peer out, he doesn't hesitate. Is the president in danger? 
No. The YP same time save. No. The YP save this time will be your own. Okay. Ugh. Like, I feel like this game needs to come to a conclusion soon because it's just becoming a bit much. Not that it's not a good game either. Oh. Where we'll do it? Under stall, secret door. Midnight, June 5th, final preparations are complete. Okay, so there's a secret door. We agreed our last night together would be our happiest ever. And we'd forget tomorrow was going to come at all. It worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off. Then ran up to the attic to look through our photos. To find one for Lonnie to take with her. And looking at them, I realized they were all in the past. And there wouldn't be any more. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I cried. And she held me. She said she knew it was hard, but life would move on. I said I didn't want my life to keep moving without her. That's when she cried too. I was so exhausted. I must have fallen asleep like that, in her arms. In the morning, I woke up, and I was finally alone. Okay. So we can't open that door, so we need to go back to the foyer, I believe. Let's go back in. <laughs> Booted out. I'm going away show for Lonnie. Okay. Yeah, we saw that. Lonnie oh, had her going that. away show with her band tonight. She's so incredible on stage. When she was singing, I could practically forget everything. That we only had 48 hours left. That I don't know what comes next. And I can't live without her. Okay. Then she dedicated the last song to me. And I couldn't take it. I was out on the curb in the alley, sobbing till my ribs hurt. I would follow her anywhere, Katie. But I can't. Where she's going. No. After a long time, she found me. She said she was sorry. She said, I wish things could be different. I just wanted to make you happy. I said, I don't think you can anymore. Uh, Barcelona. Hi, Mom, Dad, and Sam. I've had a wonderful time at the beaches of Barcelona, Dad and Sam. I think you would like gaudy architecture. It is from a strange alien world. I'm headed to my final destination, Amsterdam. For how long? That depends. I'm running low on money. I will look for a cheap standby ticket and call you when I'm headed home. Sorry for the short, short notice. Can't wait to see you all again. I'll be good. It'll be good to be home. Katie. I like how we just throw stuff when we're done with it. Okay, so what are we doing now? Uh, what's that? So I think we're going to the foyer. Okay. Did I read that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, did it say under the stairs there's a secret? Okay. That's what I thought. Uh-oh. Possessions and exorcism. Okay. A key. The attic key. So... We haven't the been to sunset the... light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I just want to sleep. 
When I'm in the attic, it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here. <clears throat> She's just downstairs. I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic. And wait. Okay. Oscar. Mason's pharmacy. Okay. Chalk. Okay. Okay, so I believe we need to go to the attic now. Let's do it. Okay, finally. I think we might be getting to the end. We'll see. Sam, I'll always remember what we had. Stay strong. I love you, Lonnie. Kick ass. in my old spot and I missed the first two calls I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it and it was Lonnie on a payphone she'd been on the bus to basic and she said she couldn't she couldn't think of anything but me and us and that she couldn't go through with it oh, with wow. the army and being a part and all of it and so she got off the bus in Salem she said Sam, I want you to pack up everything you can and get in your car and come find me. And let's just drive until we find somewhere. <laughs> well, that's surprising. For us. And she asked me if I could do that. And I said yes. Yes. Okay. Katie, I'm so sorry that I can't be there to see you in person, that I can't tell you all this myself, but I hope as you read this journal and you think back, that you'll understand why I had to do what I did, and that you won't be sad, and you won't hate me, and you'll just know that I am where I need to be. I love you so much, Katie. I'll see you again someday. Love, Sam. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, that was gone home. <clears throat> definitely turned out to be a little different than I expected um it was more it was obviously a love story rather than horror um I was expecting definitely some sort of entity in the house for some reason but you know I didn't really read anything about this game before I jumped right in um so it definitely led you to believe that there was some sort of haunting or some sort of ghost but really that was just childhood games where they you know get spooked out and they start playing with a Ouija board and they look for something that isn't there. Um, something I think most of us can relate to growing up. Um, we all like to do our little ghost investigations. Um, but it turned out to be just a story about two teenage girls who um, end up falling for each other and it causes some trouble within the family, especially towards the end. And uh, the one girl is set to go into the army and in the end, she decides not to, and they sail off into the sunset. So it had a much happier ending than I was expecting. Um, it took me a while to figure out who we were playing as, but I think we were actually playing as the older sister who has gone home after being away. So that totally confused me. And I guess 
that if I would have looked in the beginning, if we looked at the passport, we could have seen who we were. So that was something on my fault, or my, that was on me, <laughs> basically. Um, but yeah, it was good, and I liked that it was in um, LGBT, well, L type of story, something you don't see a lot in games, and it did kind of tackle the issue of acceptance and parents not really understanding it and trying to tell you that you're not the way you are, which um, I can totally understand, wink wink. Um, but yeah, I think they tackled it really well. Uh, my only complaint is it seemed a little bit drawn out, but maybe it's just because I'm slow at playing games. Um, it took me almost two hours to get to the end of this, and it just felt like it started to drag a little bit towards the end. But maybe, you know, I have such a short attention span, and it wasn't that it wasn't keeping <laughs> my attention. It was. It just felt that it, to me, it felt like it took a long time to get where we were going, and I kind of wish there was something a little bit more in the game to get your pulse going, you know what I mean, to get your adrenaline going, even if they didn't want to go down the whole route of the house being haunted. There could have been some more scary things thrown in, maybe the power going out, or some strange sounds, I know we had the thunder, but it just felt like there could have been a little bit more, and there wasn't a whole lot of interaction either, or puzzles, which I thought there were going to be a lot more puzzles. It was mainly just clicking things, um, which is fine. It's basically like a visual novel, but it was very long, again. But props to the developer, there's obviously so much into this game, and it was really, it was good, you know, despite me wishing there was a little bit more interaction, or maybe there was a little bit more scariness to it, because I'm usually out playing these games because I want to be scared, I want to be creeped out. This didn't really creep me out at all. But it did get me thinking, and it was a good story, and it was a good game, so props. Um, I hope you liked it, and if you did like it, like the video. And if you've watched some of my other videos and you haven't yet, go ahead and click subscribe. Um, it helps me out, and then you can get updates on my future content, which I'm making all the time. I'm basically making at least one video a day, or I'm trying to. I have a new microphone coming, which will improve sound. I have a new webcam coming. I hope to upgrade my computer. I'm really going all out into this. So I hope that you at least um, subscribe if you like me, okay? So that's it for today, and I will be back very, very soon with something else, okay? Peace.